Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Every Monday night, I'm here sitting in this captain's chair. i got a fantastic guest, fantastic show. What a fantastic week. I had last week, I played five, six, seven, whatever, it, gigs, whatever it is, man, those numbers, I, it gets lost after playing so much, and I would not change a thing. Welcome to the show, everybody, coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world and the internet. Thanks to the marvel of technology, I'm coming at you live from this little video guest house. What you see on this camera is probably about the size of the living space I live in, and yes, we are live right now on Facebook, as well as uh, Inception Radio Network, I believe, Tube, something like that, if you poke around on the website you'll be able to find it Uh, a couple of announcements august 5th and 6th i believe yes at the agri center here in memphis tennessee we're gonna have another phenomenal huge memphis metaphysical fair the memphis metaphysical fair we play host to psychic mediums tarot card readers crystal and stone healers and vendors native american motif paranormal investigating and 20 workshops over the two days august 5th and 6th agri center international memphis tennessee 10 a.m to 6 p.m ten dollars for one day adult pass and 16 for both days, which I suggest you do, because there's going to be a lot to take in. Uh, military discounts available. Children under 12 are freebies. Workshops range from zero to ten dollars each. Vending boots are still available. You can visit Memphis Metaphysical. Dot com for more information. I will be doing a talk there. Um, I think I'm going to do it on radical transformation. Trust me when I tell you, I have the ability to look at you, intuit you, and go inside of you and push a couple of buttons. I'm confident that way. It may sound cocky, but it isn't. It's confidence. I've been doing this a long time, and when I push those buttons, I can help expand you, at least for the moment, to give you a glimpse. And once you get a glimpse of the possibilities, talk about the motivating fact of you staying on the path. A radical transformation, I think, is what my talk is going to be about. So heads up, that's going to be coming down the pike, and I will keep announcing this to that day comes of the weekend, uh, comes right before the event. Kenneth Pass, recent guest here on Center of Light Radio. When he was a boy, roughly seven, eight years old, uh, Kenneth was abducted on a camping trip, him and some of his uh, ch- uh, friends, as well as some um, chaperones, guides from the camp, and they were brought back 10,000 years. Now, Kenneth was with these aliens for quite a few years, and uh, one of them pissed him off. And so he decided he's going to grab a piece of vital technology, and he buried it into a cave, the sand, the dirt, wherever. So he buried this technology away from the aliens, and he wants to bring it to the Hopi and the, uh, and the Pueblo. And the gig is we're raising money for Kenneth. Uh, he needs about $500. Right now we have a, a, maybe 150 bucks, give or take. And... Uh, The gig is that we're going to get Kenneth on a bus, because Kenneth is a very simple guy. We're going to put him on a bus. We're going to bring him to uh, where he found this artifact, and he's going to bring it to the Hopi and the Pueblo. And the gig is, when he comes back, he's going to come back for part two in Center of Light Radio, and he's going to tell us about his findings, uh, how his experience with the Hopi and the Pueblo should make for a phenomenal show. So what you do is you go to centeroflightradio.com. There's a lot of moving parts. You will see a flying saucer whiz across the stream, and you will also see a donate button, five, ten bucks would be great. Kenneth and I would both appreciate that. We do have some funds coming in already, so I thank you greatly, and please keep doing that. Uh, We're going to get right down to the show. I'm I'm really excited about talking to my bro. So let me tell you again about my phenomenal guest, Mr. Brian D. Harden. He says, I am addicted to thought and addicted to creativity. I am always making something, studying something, or playing something. I believe that imagination is more important than knowledge. Dig that. I try to play more than I think. I follow my intuition, my heart, turn off the judgment, including judgment of myself. I've been blessed to be able to meditate and be in ceremony with many great elders, Lakota, Hopi, Mayan, Tibetan, Inca, Mexico. There's a few I can't name, Navajo and Cherokee. Uh, I am focused on sharing messages of hope and understanding to the world. I am blessed with creating great projects and sharing a clear explanation of what changes are happening to humanity and how we are all unifying and collectively raising and shifting 
our consciousness. You can find more about this phenomenal guest, and he's got a lot of bells and whistles that's going to be coming with this broadcast, you can bet. You can find more about him at www.brianbriandharden.com. H-A-R-D-I-N.com. That's Brian Hard, D. Harden dot com. Welcome to Center of Light, my bro. Well, hey, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> I, I also can be found at New Ways, K-N-E-W-W-A-Y-S. And that's sort of the topic of what we're trying to talk about today, new ways to evolve. And uh, that's what you are helping people with right now in your, in your book and in your uh, seminars. Is, isn't that correct? Yeah, it's everything I'm about. And in fact, Brian, I have you as a featured guest in my newsletter for the next month. I decided not to do one for February, but check this out. Uh, I would like you to be a part of my next book. The idea is all these bursts of light live feeds I've recently done. I've just created this this entire new book by channeling this information during these speeds. And I want to include a center of light radio guest that relates to whatever particular subject of the verse of light live feed I did and get a one paragraph um, from, for, for example, this interview that we're doing to insert into the book, put your website, put what you're about. So I want to make this book a network written document book, best selling thing. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm yeah. in. I'm in. Dang, well, hey, you know, your your guest that you talked about with the Hopi that uh, has got some information for them, I, I have some inf information for you. Maybe we'll drop into that after the show. But basically, I, I've had a connection with the Hopi uh, in several different ways. We ran 1,800 miles. We gathered water from around the world, ran 1,800 miles to go to Mexico City, and then about a year later ran back to Hopi with that water. And uh, on the second run back, uh, after that, we met with the Hopi prophecy carrier at the time named Martin Geshwiyama, and he took us to Prophecy Rock and explained the prophecies to my video camera and then took me back to his house and explained things to me like uh, beyond the prophecies uh, like hollow earth and some other interesting things. I'll get into that with you later, but let's not talk about that today. Let's talk about <laughs> the evolution of consciousness because that's, that's what we intended to do. Sure, but uh, whenever you feel it, if you feel led in the direction of talking about the hollow earth and the Agarthans and all that might be taking place in there, we can, we can lean into that a little bit, but yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll digitize that video footage and share it with you first, and then, then you Dig can it. share it with the world. Dig okay. It. So what are some new ways, Brian, that uh, you have been pondering, intuiting, that we can all move into the bigger picture for bigger humanity, for this big explosion of light that we all know the heaven and earth prophecy to be? Well, um, I think most of these new ways are actually old ways. Uh, we've kind of gotten in our own way. Uh, we had the Industrial Revolution, which is all about stuff. And that happened about the late 1800s and early 1900s. And then we, got, we started getting connected to stuff. Before that, we chopped wood and carried water. It would have it would, it would seemed magical for me to tell you that we're going to harness the energy of lightning bolts and run it through tubes so you'll have the the energy of sunlight in the middle of the night in your house. Now, that would have sounded like a magical mystery, like there's no chance that's going to happen. And then suddenly it happened for everybody, and that, that happened over the course of just a few years. And, and that was about 130 years ago. That was the physical revolution of industrial revolution. Then we've had this mental revolution, the information age. And I know when you and I were probably in high school, we dreamt of this little black box, just like Star Trek, where you could talk to it and it would give you the answer answers of the world and now everybody's got an iPhone and they, they, you know the information age is a totally different thing than uh, and it came on really quickly so a school that teaches you knowledge that's information we don't need that school in the same way anymore we, we, we don't need information I don't need to know who the, the general of whatever battle was in history I don't need to know uh, a lot of details that they teach you in school. Instead, I can ask my iPhone, and it'll tell me the information. What I need to know is your intuition, your how to think, not what to think, but how to think, how to be creative with your thought, and and how to be inventive with your with your mind and open minded to evolve. So, you know, Darwin said that. Well, actually, actually, let me let me tell you a quote before that. Uh, uh, John Lennon said that uh, that uh, uh, w 
what I was some school school teacher asked him some little question. I think you've heard this story before, where where a school teacher asked him uh, what he wanted to be in life. And his answer was happy. And she said, apparently, you don't understand the uh, the question. And he said, apparently, you don't understand life. Life was about becoming <laughs> happy. And, and, uh, and so most people's purpose in life has to do with happiness, their joy or bringing other people joy. And, and so uh, if, if we go about so that's the evolution. So evolution not only is that happiness, but is about change. Uh, they, uh, they say that uh, evolution favors those that are adaptable to change. So the two things that I'm, I want to talk about are happiness and being adaptable to change and how we can work both of those in a new system that's not with this old system, this old paradigm system that we have. Um, do, do, you, do you agree with that? Is this part of your teachings? Absolutely. It, it is. It's my gig. That's complete. That's for sure. Every day when I wake up to the time I go to bed, I'm in alignment with that program. Yeah. So here's something I do when I wake up. Uh, I've been I used to just meditate once a day and I thought that was a lot. And now I've been meditating two times a day. I've got this great yoga teacher in, uh, in Nashville. It, it created Deepak Chopra's uh, yoga program and her, and his, her his meditation program. And she uh, she said, no, you got to you got to try it twice a day. So every time every day when I wake up, I wake up and I smile. And the first thing I do is smile. I Put on a big goofy grin, and it's fake at first. And here, just try it right now. Just give it, give me a big. There we go, the big goofy grin. And then all of a sudden, your chest unlocks, and you start to breathe. So now, take a couple deep breaths with that big goofy smile. <sighs> and, and so with the big deep breath and the big goofy smile, now try to think of something really negative. You can't. You can't think of anything negative. You're just only wow. on the positive. And so they say that, you know, you, you, what you think you become, well, if you want the high frequency, you can just become the high frequency, and then you aren't thinking of the low frequency. It's the other way around, too. It's, the, it's like a figure eight. And so I, I, what I've been doing is, first thing I do when I meditate is just smile, and then I breathe, and then I just start becoming aware of my breath. And every time I'm aware of the breath, then I let go and let go and let go of more of the stress. And the heavies come off. You know, they say enlighten, lighten up. And I, I let go of all the heavy stuff that's hanging on to me. Oh, I'm worried about money, or I'm worried about job, or I'm worried about this relationship, or I'm worried about whatever it is that you're worried about, the past or the future, whatever you're worried about. And I start letting go of those things, and I'm just breathing and aware of the breath. Breathing and aware of the breath. And I just tune into the frequency I want to become. So in physics, they say that uh, match your frequency to that of what you want. And then that's what you become. And so uh, it's, it's like that's the law of attraction. So if you want to be happy, if you want to attract intelligence and kindness and lovingness, well, then be that. And then it's pretty simple. So anyway, I've been doing that to start off with. And I drop into meditation while I do yoga. So I, I pop into a yoga position and I lay there in this some twisted pretzel looking position. And I breathe and relax. <laughs> Sometimes I turn on the snooze alarm clock, and seven minutes later it beeps. And then I go to another position, and I do it again. And I go to another position. And, you know, sometimes I do this uh, with the alarm clock. Sometimes I just naturally do it. And I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, I've meditated. I've done yoga. I feel really good. And I'm smiling. And my energy's right. I'm totally aware that my day is going to be perfect. Another little chant I tell myself is, everything's perfect, even when it's not. I tell myself, it's perfect. And it's, you know, sometimes, I mean, I have really, really bad days, too. But if I approach that bad day uh, with positivity, usually I clearly communicate what I need, and I get back what I want in a, in a better way, as opposed to fighting, you know? And you know, yeah, Brian, I'm with you. I, I, I often post and say, get out of the fight. Yeah, look, we can look at social media and people are fighting the world. They're fighting the post. They're fighting within themselves. It could it be just as simple as just stopping and getting out of the fight, getting out of the, the terrorism and getting out of the politics and getting out of the internal fight that creates the judgment and the false per erroneous perception that just creates nothing but internal ongoing grief to me such a sad shift 
can be such a monumental perspective, a monumental explosion, a burst of light by just changing your attitude. Yes. So, so uh, yum or yuck is our choice. So you have a choice in, in, in every moment to choose yum or yuck. It's like create or destroy. And the first thing we usually destroy is ourselves. So you start with that negative thought. You start destroying yourself. I can't do it. I'm too fat. I'm too ugly. I'm too stupid. I'm not fast enough. I'm not young enough. I'm not or I'm not old enough. I'm not tall enough or not short enough. I'm not whatever. Enough. I'm not enough. And so what's the best prayer? What is it? I am. Whatever you finish with I am blank. That's what you become, right? That, that's the prayer where you and I have been taught for how many years? <laughs> I am. And so, you know, say, say your prayers. You know, what, 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 we're, what we dream can come true and what we fear can come true. So I am stupid. I am fat. I am ugly. I'm not smart. I'm not gifted. I'm not good enough. You know, that's a prayer. You're just saying that. So when you go to the opposite of having love and gratitude and being in acceptance of yourself and everything else and knowing that you're you're perfectly in timing with the world, you're part of the whole the whole cog of this whole creation. You're co-creating this world with everybody else, and you're, you're an essential part of it. And then you suddenly find purpose in your life, and then you activate. You know, that's, that's life. Life's a roller coaster or a treadmill. It's your choice, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like um, the ego is like riding the front seat of a roller coaster. And, you know, how do you expect to find a peaceful ground to stand on when there's just all this stimuli and all this hyper excitement? Where do you begin to find grounding and balance and just being centered to a space of peace when we're just so, you know, having <laughs> exactly. we're white knuckled on the, on the front of the seat, right? Right. You know, but here's the here's the here's the funny thing, Brian. You know, when we go to that said amusement park, do we choose the Ferris wheel first or do we choose the roller coaster? We choose the instrument that gives us the most fright, the most bang for the buck. You know, mm-hmm. I guess the question becomes, how long do we want to keep banging around? <laughs> well, we, we talked about evolution. So evolution favors those who are adaptable to change. So our species wants to evolve. I mean, every, every living thing, a plant, any animal, will struggle to stay alive. And it will it'll protect its young, to wanting to preserve the, the lineage of, of that family, of that, of that being. And th- it protects its own and wants, wants them to continue to create. And so this, this is, goes true with ourselves. If we are adaptable to change, we are evolving much more quickly. So the evolution of consciousness is, are, is favoring those who are adaptable to change. If you're unwilling to change, you're unwilling to evolve. And, and so evolution is not a pretty thing. It's not like you suddenly get little airy fairy wings and everything's all unicorns and rainbows. Instead, it's quite often you seeing your shadow, seeing some dark places of yourself that, that are kind of quite ugly and quite difficult to deal with sometimes. And, and, uh, and at first you deny them, and then you finally get to a place of acceptance. And when you start to accept them, you can love yourself and others as equals. And that's the real, that's what Jesus was trying to say, love one another, love all, right? You know? Brian, I was talking to uh, my producer here a little bit ago about some of the things that you are involved with. And I, listening to all these, Brian is one of these cats. You know, he's got a finger in every pie, so to speak, in the musical industry, in the spiritual industry. And he does all these really cool things. And uh, right now, Brian, if you would share with me some of the people um, that you've, had the opportunity to produce album wise you don't have to name a whole bunch but four or five maybe something that might give us kind of this oddness about who you are and the beautiful work you're doing and i mean this in all the right ways but also this young up-and-coming cat uh that you're producing now in the studio and how he is connected to other arenas to use the word making change in the movement of the matrix i guess you can. oh cool well, Absolutely. Actually, let, me just, let me just run to him because he's just brilliant. He was 16 last week. He just turned 17 last week. He's he was he's already spoken at the United Nations three times at the age of 16. 
I mean, I don't know anybody else who's even begun to go there once, but 16 years old, he's spoken three times. He uh, last week was in Billboard magazine, oh, excuse me, Rolling Stone magazine, two weeks before Billboard magazine for this album that we're doing now. We haven't yet 100% finished any of the songs yet. He's got Leonardo DiCaprio doing eight TV shows around him. He's got film crews from all over the world, one in Germany and uh, one here in the U.S. and others following him around doing things about climate change. He's suing the U.S. government. Was Barack Obama personally? <laughs> and now it's, it's obviously wow. Donald Trump and the U.S. government for climate change. And uh, the idea is that he's, he's really uh, a, a uh, um, Earth Guardian. He's got a, a group called the Earth Guardians, and he's really focused on making an evolutionary change for everyone. He says the planet does not need saving, that instead our consciousness needs to evolve, that once our consciousness evolves, we realize that, that we are one with the planet. We, are in, we have to be in harmony with the planet. If we kill the planet, we kill ourselves. And so we have to get in harmony with it now, with our wisdom, our knowledge, our technology, our ways, our patterns, our consumption of energy, our, our you know, uh, the way that we work, the way that we live, our housing, our water, and so on. And uh, he's, he just turned 17. We're working on his album. Also, uh, there's a violin player named uh, Richard Wagner. He's 18 years old. He's a, also a prodigy. Brilliant kids. These are, these are, these are not young souls these are guys that i've been waiting for you probably have been too i don't know about you but for me in my spiritual uprising i found very few men that i could talk to on a high level and and uh i had lots and lots of women that i could talk to on a spiritual level but very few men and now i'm i'm flooded just recently in the past two months with young kids that are 18 or 16 through 25 that are just brilliant. And it's like those were those indigo kids, or I don't know what you want to call them. Those were those young kids coming in that had a whole nother view of life, and they do. And maybe you and I were cutting some new edge for them, but they're here now, and we, you and I have to be a platform for them, and I'm thankful you are. Man, I totally dig that. You know, we may we may have cracked the, the door, but they're coming in kicking it down. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and uh, the fact that you said that this guy that you're working with now, this young prodigy, Jutesca <laughs> Martinez. Yeah. Jutesca. Jutesca. They call him X. A X. X. The letter X. You know, Z uh, or X sounds like uh, like xylophone. Yes. Jutesca. Cal. There's an L on the end, so I don't know. It's I like that you said that yeah. he was with a group called the Earth Guardians or Guardians Earth of the Guardians. Weather. And he's got, at this age, he's got the, the nerve, <laughs> the fire within him to take on huge systems like the government and all these. There is a fire burning in this boy, obviously. And again, back to my point is you have your finger in lots of really powerful, potential, collective, changing pies man i mean that's that's great to be involved with such stuff man right before our call started i just got a call from uh, my friend who owns and runs unify i helped him found unify uh, years ago in 2012 but he's run with it and he's made it in unify.org is a be beautiful thing that they uh, offer a platform for international gatherings to do international meditations or gatherings that are good for the world. They're collectives. So unify.org, uh, you ought to check it out. And his name is Adil Kassam, and he's working uh, this past couple of weeks with Pachamama Alliance, which uh, I was up uh, for an event we did in February where we ran with the Standing Rock Runners across the Golden Gate Bridge uh, honoring Standing Rock. And the, the Standing Rock Runners were the fifth and sixth and seventh people to start Standing Rock were teen, these teenager young kids are in their 20s, and they were there to run with us. We ran 4.7 miles and did a ceremony there called a Wopi Duh. And it, the, the importance of that is 
gratitude. So, you know, we talked about get your frequency right. When you're in gratitude, giving thanks for all that you have and grateful, you aren't negative. You aren't full of hate, anger, argue, blame, and complain. You're instead full of love. So your choice is yum or yuck. And if you're grateful, then it's good. In that uh, beautiful ceremony, everybody comes together and actually unifies in their own way. It's a really beautiful ceremony. Wopi Da is Dakota. Wopi La is Lakota. Check it out. Yeah. Brian, we were, you asked me in the green room about some of my work I could bring to the table about new ways of helping humanity evolve. And I told you that I just sent, uh, someone sent me um, a page number in my book that they were, where they were located in the reading of it. I said I was going to find it and I couldn't. And while you were just dialoguing, she pops up and said, this answer one of my lifelong daily questions. So I have no idea what it says. I'm gonna is it page 37? No, I, I, I assume, but this is different. The question, I guess, it says, I'm having a dialogue with spirit, and the question I put is, but what if it turns out that I am not on the right path? And spirit says, this is a common worry for most spiritual aspirants, but the truth is that no one could ever get off the path that is meant for him or her. If someone feels that they have strayed, this concern of theirs will put them right back on it. Here is the path. Just stay in the present moment at all times. It is this awareness of the now that will keep you from being caught off guard by events that in the past would have caused you to react it is not accurate to think that you can deviate from your life's design the fact is that not recognizing the path is actually part of your path yes <laughs> you know uh i died when i was 16 and i got to uh well, it, 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 let me see if I can zoom through it in seconds here. I, I came out of body, got to see myself from above, and then I went through this little tunnel, and I got to review my life, all the great things, all the bad things. And it, and after each great thing and ever, after each bad thing that I reviewed, it was basically I was asked the question, have you learned your life lesson? Have you learned your life lesson? Did you learn from this good thing or did you learn from this bad thing? And then I finally got to another place, which it was – what I'd call collective consciousness, and that's uh, and then I was able to be there for a second, that collective consciousness, and and had the choice of returning or staying there. And I, of course, chose to come back. And I reviewed my life then again. Did you learn your life lesson? Did you learn your life lesson? So every positive or negative thing, we have to look at the life lesson. What is the life lesson in it? And and th those challenges are what it is you know like you have to expect that uh the evolution of your consciousness not to be all those uh rainbows and unicorns but instead to be uh difficult trials and tribulations because that's how you learn and grow you don't learn from just everybody every everything being nice and easy you learn from your difficulties right you know it's been that way for me. In fact, the, one of the greatest difficulties I had in my life is sacred ground. Uh, it, it taught me the biggest, most valuable lesson you know, the same, to the same degree and level that it, was, it kicked my ass. To the same degree and level, it opened me up and gave me life. Brian, we're at the bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information to our listening audience so they can find out more about you and the phenomenal work you're doing across the board in this world, oh. my brother? Thank you. Uh, K N E W W A Y S, newways.com. K N E W W A Y S.com. And my name is Brian, B R I A N, D as in David, H A R D I N, Brian D. Harden.com. Both work. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, 
Look at the opening page, the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome power pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet. All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. Brian, it's quite awesome to me. You and I walk very, very similar paths. We're both musicians to to the fullest level. We're engaged fully in that. I want to rock do with it. You. Oh, let's do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you want to come to Memphis and do it in the blues and soul, rock and roll kind of way? You want me to come out to Cali and do it in the hip kind of way? Either way, either way. Actually, there's, there's a little blues out here, too. Do you know Dennis oh, Jones? You. Dennis Jones Band? Yeah. He, do you know him? Because he, he was in Memphis for the Memphis Blues Awards uh, recently. And I produced an album or three on him, three albums on him. He's brilliant. Yeah, I'll, we'll get to that later. Okay. <laughs> Man, I, I love your craft as, as producer. Thanks. You know, I'm producing a, a group here in town now. And the songwriting is phenomenal. And I know the process, you know, let everything, like I said, when we're in the studio, everybody wants to bring ideas. And ideas are great. I will never discard an idea. We even, we even print the idea. But now that we have this big, solid stone, we begin to carve away because the, st- the song sure. will begin to dictate to you what it requires. It will tell you what it wants more of. It will also tell you what it wants absolutely none of. And it's a process. It's like Mike, uh, Michael, you know, sculpting the statue of David. Listening to spirit, essence. right? Absolutely. Listening to spirit. Well, you know, I, uh, I, I think once we get our mind out of the way, the spirit gets to talk, right? Like, have you ever played a guitar solo that was just from your brain, and then played the same solo from you, from your heart, which was you had no brain power going, you were just exhausted or something? <laughs> yeah. like you do that all the time, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so let me ask you this. We're talking about music. We're also talking about new ways. What is it like for you as a producer? I know what it's like for being a musician because it seems it seems a little more active because I'm in the band. I'm in the I'm in the volume. I'm hunkering down. I'm into the song. I got a drummer pounding his ass off behind me. Dang, dang, dang. And but what is it like being a producer when you get into that zone? How would you describe that word zone? How can we motivate others to get into their own zone? So can you tell us what it's like for you when you get into your zone? And what is it really like to exist in that magical, divine, creative spot? Uh, Actually, it's very funny. I'm a bit of a clown. And I find that most of my best creations happen when I have that attitude of when I was a kid. Uh, that playfulness, that innocence, that open-mindedness, there's no judgment. And I'm just seeking joy. I'm seeking good. I'm seeking yum. And the seek, seeking of good, you, you watch little kids do this all the time. They, they just, there's no brain power. They're just following the path of creation. And I actually am best when I do follow that path of creation. Uh, If you watched me write songs, I typically have three or four computers all here wide open all at the same time. And I'm writing songs while I'm editing a video, while I'm on the Internet, and while I'm watching basketball or something, you know, all at the same time. And I keep my brain so preoccupied with other stuff that my brain isn't so thinking about the details of the song that I'm only feeling the song. And when I stay with the feeling, then I'm on that evolution of consciousness because I, I feel, let's change this. This is, this is what it is. I feel as though that is the answer. And our change in evolution of consciousness is go, go from I think we should do this to I feel we should do this. It's getting out of the head and into the heart getting out of the mind and the control and the knowingness to the intuition. The real intellect is in that collective, is being part of that whole and and being one with nature. And nature's always changing. So what worked for us 200 years ago or 100 years ago with education doesn't work now. What worked, you know, and so people that are our age, your age and my age, that 
are stuck in their brain and they know this is the way that's always worked, they're not open to change. They're not open to evolving. These 16 through 25 year old kids that I'm working with, their heads are wide open. Their hearts are wide open. They just feel things, yum or yuck, and we, we go for it. And I, I hand them six balls to juggle, and then I have, hand them a seventh, and then an eighth, and they don't even know that it's impossible to juggle eight balls. And yet right. they're doing, <laughs> and yet they're doing it because I didn't tell them it's impossible. No one ever told them that it's impossible. So they're doing, they're doing unknown things. Same with you playing guitar or anything else. It all comes from spirit. And, and once you start thinking, it gets in the way. So I feel. <laughs> Absolutely. Brian, we look at these people, not we, but a lot of people. They deem these children that are coming up today millennials. I like the title, actually, mind you, because it implies futuristic possibility, quantum technology, quantum spiritual technology. But it seems that everybody's hitting on them pretty hard because they're into their iPads and into their iPhones. I think they're on, they on hold right now. I think they're in a the place of waiting for something intuitive to say, now's the time. And something's going to come out of it in a very big way. Yeah. I, I truly believe that they are filling themselves internally as well as externally with information. Information is power. Power is uh, freedom. Freedom is bliss. And I think they're impregnating themselves on many different levels. And I think they are on hold right now into the appropriate time comes for them to actually step out and step forward and do the work they are here to do. And that's going to level everybody's uh, assumptions of them from the past. Yes. Yes. So um, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was waiting for this time. Uh, and I've, I've been itching. I've known that, there's, that the world that I was in then was okay, but it felt like a box. And I... And I didn't feel like I was part of that box. I didn't feel like it was in harmony with nature. I didn't feel like it was as creative and inventive. And I felt like everybody was starting to turn into a robot. And then you, you multiply that by another four decades, and it's multiplied by four. And it feels really intense right now. And these kids, I don't mind them dropping out of school because... Uh, school for me 40 years ago was a bore. It was so slow. And for, for someone who thinks outside of the box to be restricted to this old paradigm way that was invented in the early 1900s for the industrial revolution. I had no interest in it from the get go. I quit. I, and I didn't care. I had no regrets. It wasn't my gig. I felt stuffed in a box. I felt confined. And what's, what's the saying now? Instead of children learning what the system has to teach, maybe the, ch the system needs to teach the way children learn. Learn, you know, yes. And it, it comes down to the wire, where the kid sits in the room, who they sit next to. Are they sitting next to the window? What color is the room? Is the room you know, green? Is it a color they don't like? And all these different components make a very, very important difference in the education of the child. But I think that's all changed. For example, what we talked about this last time you were on the air. Was it Sweden or wherever it was? They're actually removing school from a lot, a lot of school from children's lives. They only go to school two hours a day. No homework. Lots of recess. And their grade average, point average is shifting through the roof. How is this possible? Because they're not leaning on, like, for example, a calculator. They're using their spirit. Um, for example, instead of using a calculator, you'd have to figure out a math problem yourself. Well, it's the same idea. They're not leaning on the school system. They are able now to figure out their life. Yes. Yes. You know, um, the system that you and I grew up in, I, I wished would have evolved to include all this new technology, and I don't think it has. I think the teachers now 
want to teach the way you and I are talking should be taught, but they're being restricted by administration and governments and other things, restriction in this weird competition of no child left behind. You know what it does? It shoves them all behind. We are now at, I think, 18th in the world for, for education. We're supposed to be the big leader. No, we're at least 18th. I don't know, maybe even less than that for education. Our education system is failing us. And it's because we're not allowing for that inventive, creative, these beautiful teachers. I guarantee you they're out there. These beautiful teachers that really want to share their enthusiasm. Because what teaches people is enthusiasm, is passion, is excitement. And I know these teachers have it, you know. Yeah. That's why they got into the vocation in the first place. From the chat room, DD asked a question. Does Brian feel there or other spirits or entities affecting or guiding personal ascension or evolution? Oh, of course. Yes. I mean, I've got them all over, and, and I'm sure everybody does. Um, it's so amazing for us to, to be on this tiny little blue dot out here in the middle of nowhere. In, in fact, our little blue dot is in the Milky Way galaxy, and I, I read this recently. There, were, I think it was... 2.2 billion potential Earth-like planets in our Milky Way galaxy. It was something crazy like that. I and don't that know. That might where, be a small number. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the potential for a lot of different other life out there. And so we're we're cavemen. We just got electricity 130 or 120 years ago. And in indoor plumbing a hundred years ago, and then airplane flight and cars, you know, and then finally information. So we've had this physical revolution, we've had this mental revolution, and we're having right now the beginnings of a spiritual revolution, whatever that is. And most people have no concept of what that is. Now, just like before we had the physical revolution, if I would have told you that we're going to grab lightning bolts and shove it down tubes and run it into your house and let you have have heat and light in the middle of the night, you would have thought I was crazy. If I would have told you we were going to be able to fly from here to Europe in four hours, you would have thought I was crazy. If, we, you would have, if I would have said we we're going to go to the moon and back, no way. That's, in, that's insane talk. Well, in the same way, uh, our spiritual revolution or, or evolution or adaptability to change, change is coming so quickly that things that are, sound crazy are going to feel like miracles are happening in the spiritual realm. And if you don't yet understand spirit or believe in spirit, then I invite you to open up to it because it's a third part of you. Your physical body, your mental mind and control and ego, and then you got to get that out of the way for the spirit to evolve. And the spirit, So let go of the mind, start meditating, start breathing, start smiling, start connecting to nature, and your spirit will start connecting. So with that, you'll start to feel and see your ancestors. There are beings and spirits and energies, and you could call them entities or whatever, that are, that are here to help evolve humanity there, there i i personally believe that the world beyond our world the spirit world is all <laughs> cheerleading us on and yeah. wants the cavemen to kind of learn new stuff just like we want our little puppy to learn how to not pee on the rug I mean, the, the, the rest of the spirit world wants us to no longer pee on the rug and create war and violence and be addicted to a money system that doesn't serve anybody and a fuel system that, that, that destroys our entire planet and on and on and on, you know. so I think that's a pretty powerful question uh, that D.D. asked from the chat room. Because do, does he feel that spirits are affecting, guiding us? Because we were, you were recently talking about, the technology boom, 130 whatever years ago, from electricity to water uh, being irrigated into our homes. Something happened. Something yeah. happened 100 years. We have come farther in the 100 years that we're speaking about now than we have in previous times collective in the past. We're, so we're somehow we were right influenced far. on some level to create this technological explosion to where we are in just over 100 years to having communication with everyone on the planet via the Internet. Yeah, we were yeah, chopping wood and carrying water, right? Everybody was. And, and now all of a sudden we have the ability to press a button and blow up the whole world. 
like how crazy is that like isn't it true that we have something like the ability to blow up the world 2,000 times, like the amount of nuclear bombs. or It's like crazy, crazy talk. Like We're not going to make sure we just blow it up. We're going to like blow We're going to do a good job. <laughs> From the chat room, Noah James says, uh, is knowledge of information or ability to think more important well absolutely you know for example in japanese schools they don't get into academia or stuff about information till later on in many grades later because the first four years of their schooling is all about how to think how to learn manners how to be respectful how to be genuine all these really what a system to be used you know, it seems like we should be the leaders. The United States, the greatest country in the world, with the greatest leadership. That remains to be seen, really. It's it's more of a proudful nationalism, egoistic posture that, you know, we were first in space. I'm sorry, that's not true. <laughs> the only thing we're better than anybody at right now is building bombs. We are the destroyer right now, and it's very sad. We are the terrorists for the for the world. And it's it's very sad. Well, Brian, let's talk about that, if we would. Let's let's talk about this from a real honest point of view. And because I don't want someone to hear this show and go, oh, my God, did he just say that? No, he really said that. And he really I said it, it. And, and I so mean it. Why? And so do I. Because when we get out of this narrow tunnel vision perspective of how we see things, listen to many of these soldier stories that come back from overseas and tell you what's really going on from their perspective. After You don't have to believe it at first, but just keep doing the research. Do the work, and then your intuition will start to chime in. And it'll start to make sense that not we, but whatever system you want to call it, but we are some we are somewhat responsible because we have the ability to, to change that. It's truly that we can be very much a part of the problem, indirectly, but yet still part of the problem. And it's our task, our obligation, our duty as one of the reasons why we have incarnated in this time is to take our power back from the people who are destroying human lives and the planet and the the unity, the unification of all people. Um, I, I do think that uh, that the evolution of consciousness is us getting beyond war. Uh, there, there are four problems with, with the world, according to this group called the Alliance of New Humanity. They, they said... Uh, ecology that we're screwing up mother nature and teaching treating it like it's it's an infinite system the world is an infinite system and we're just destroying all the resources and using them up and and doing it willy-nilly and at the rate that we're doing it this earth doesn't have much longer to live for humanity and and this goes for you know coal gas oil blah 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 you know carbon and so on so uh in our soil and water and anyway so ecology another one is economy that we're we're tied to a money system that actually is valueless a dollar system that's is valued as is monopoly money in fact if you take a look at it they've actually now made it it's almost like a joke that if you look at the ones the fives lay them all out ones fives tens twenties fifties and, and hundreds they're the same color as monopoly money it's actually truly amazing look it up and and uh, it's like they're playing a game with us, and it's valueless. It used to be based on gold standard. Now it's based on nothing. So ecology, economy. Then based the next on lies. One, the next one is war, <laughs> and that's violence. And it starts with the way we teach our children. We hit hit our children's hand and say, "Don't hit." And then we don't hit. And so we're hitting them and saying, don't hit. Well, we do the same thing as a country. We bomb countries because they may have a bomb. So ecology, economy, war, or violence, or terrorism. And, and we're the terrorists in many ways. And then the last one is, is isms, our personal preferences. My God is better than you. My uh, country is better than yours. My uh, sexual preference is better than yours. My skin color is better than yours. My, well, you know, whatever it is. And so it's, it's funny. We have all these little personal preferences that lead to anger and hatred and violence and ignorance and greed and whatever else these problems are all caused by those things ignorance greed fears and these patterns of old and how you change all those ignorance greed fears and patterns of old here it is here's the hippie hippie uh, postcard it's love and it's love yourself love everyone else as an equal and start seeing yourself in the eyes of others and it sounds crazy but when humanity evolves to all of us doing that and not that's what it's going to be anyway yeah then we'll then we will evolve
Yeah, then we won't need war. I mean, if, if you go to uh, these countries that are war-torn, they don't want war. The people of those countries do not want war. It might be that the governments of those countries inst you know, created the war in some of the war uh, mongers in that country started blowing stuff up, but the people, their version of we the people, didn't want war. You know, let me tell you something, Brian. Some time back, some time back, when I just first discovered that v Facebook was doing video feeds, I looking down the left-hand column, I saw a live video, so I clicked on it, and it takes me to an atlas of the world, and it shows all these people with every person around the world online that is live. And I began. I did this for like two or three hours. I was entertained. I was having a blast. You put your mouse, your cursor over the blue dot. It shows you a thumbnail. Of it could be in Taiwan, someone who's just doing a live feed. And if you click on it, then it comes brings you into the theater, then you can hear them talk. And I realized that people, I went as far north on the globe as you can find, who was given the, the most northern transmission as well as southern. And I went Sa all over the Santa globe. Claus. Was that Santa Claus? Kind of, yeah. And <laughs> all I found was everyone all over the world are living the same lives that you and I are. They want nothing more than you and I want. They yeah. are just like we are. Give me more yum. That's right. That's right. Really? Yeah. yeah. Look, the, the, the guy that's living in Iraq and or Baghdad or whatever, he's he's got a little hut that was in his family for two thousand years, and he's baking bread in the same oven that the whole family lineage did, and he just wants to bake bread for the community, educate his children, raise them in a safe environment, and then. There are tanks and people running up and down the street, kicking the door down and putting an AK-47 in his face. And it's like, and these are kids that are doing this that don't know any better. And they were just told to go do it and that these people were the bad guys. And, and it's, it's a shame because then the kids come back traumatized because they finally realize, oh, my God, what was I doing? And if you, if you don't believe me, look it up. Uh, like this group called Occupy Marines who, uh, who were seeking peace. And, and they were the Marines that, that, that were in, at war. And they finally realized and woke up that what they were doing wasn't totally awake. Like, you know, there's morals and their ethics. Morals might say you must go kill all the bad guys, and these are the bad guys. So go, go get them, boys. And then you f just follow your brain. The morals come from your brain, and whatever you're told, yes, I will obey, like a little robot. But ethics come from your heart, and ethically, you feel things. This is where we go from the head to the heart. I think to I feel we should do things. And these kids finally woke up to I feel it is wrong. They ethically knew that they did no place to stand on. They had not an ethical leg to stand on to go create war with people that didn't need they were many of my marine friends were over in Afghanistan protecting poppy fields, heroin fields, where they make heroin. And guess what we have now in the U.S.? A heroin epidemic. Durr, wonder where that came from. Durr. You know, Brian, we are slowly but surely coming to the top of the hour from the chat room. We are also being exposed to a bunch of apocalyptic media. I really don't, usually don't talk about subjects like this, uh, political and these kinds of events. But I think if we see them from the right perspective, they have a purpose, at least for my platform, Center of Light Radio. Yeah. Don't buy into anyone out there. Don't buy into the posts from your newswire or any of that stuff. And I'm not saying that some of it's not legit or true of the dynamic of what's going on but don't buy it into the sense of it that it is your reality and it dictates to you that it is the absolute truth in the sense that this is the event that's going to happen because the people who are puppet masters know how to spin your consciousness they know how to spin and influence you and put you under hypnosis to where when you start to buy into it, the collective consciousness that begins to back said ap apocalyptic media becomes more and more favorable. Get out of the fight. They call television programming for a reason. It yeah. programs you. So also with empathy, empathy comes from that heart place too. And if you program your brain to play bad video games, violence, 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 and and uh, then you're watching violent movies, and then you start dreaming violence, and 
and you don't you watch TV shows every night with just violence in it. Murder's no big deal. Oh, it's just another dead person. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, right. no, you have no empathy left. There's no heart. There's no feeling. You're not. You're not so, so numb. numb. And so you're numb, and you have no feeling, and you want to feel, and you want to be touched and hugged. And so what do you do? Go drink? You know what do you do? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what these people do that, and, and then they, they become. You know, addicted to the wrong stuff. You know, so uh, be addicted to yum. Do more of what your raises your frequency. Higher frequency. I eat organic food, and that raises my frequency. It sounds all hippy dippy, but I had five health problems that all disappeared when I I started eating organic food. I turned the TV off, and all my stress and anxiety started going away because I wasn't tapped into the daily breath of the news of the fear box. And, yes, and, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Some people say, well, I'm just watching it. You're not just watching it. Whether you think you're just watching it, it is becoming part of who you are because you amalgamated with said vibration. Brian, sad we at the top of the hour, dude, I could have another two hour interview with you. With you. Um, everyone, my guest, Mr. Brian Harden, you can find him at www.briand. H A R D I N. Brian D. Harden dot com. One quick final thought, sir, quickly. Well, also newways.com. And how That's I good, usually. Sir. How I always use, uh, how I uh, typically always end all my things are uh, question everything, fear nothing, laugh more, worry less, love all, and do it with gratitude for everything, even the bad stuff. Have gratitude for it because it's all teaching you a lesson in life. So find the lesson and don't repeat it. Peace, Brian. Thank you, my brother. Wow, I love this cat. I'm still going to take you up, hopefully, on that uh, co-studio uh, session. <laughs> Everyone, Mr. Brian D. Harden, I love this guy. I love everything he's about. I love what he does. He does everything with quality. Thanks. Quality, and he does it with passion. And it, there is no way it's not going to happen from his perspective. That's about then You can bet on that. I'm going to see you guys next week's Monday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Center of Light Radio fires off, and I'm the captain of this starship that conducts all the affairs of the heart. Live in the heart. That's the Stargate, man. You get in there, then the universe opens up greater than you could possibly imagine. Peace, love, and light. Ease into bliss. Oh.